Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tropico number one. You have been in office for the only game years where now. being a dictator is a good thing. Tropico number one brings you right back in the Cold War on a small island in the Caribbean. So get yourself a Ron Cabano and a small Cohiba, cause we're in for a ride. Released in 2001 by Pop Top Software, it is the first game of a very long and successful game series. I've never played it before. I've never played any tropical game before taking on this review. I was just like a tourist landing for the first time in Cuba. In awe and very, very, very drunk. So let's start by the beginning of the game. If you're trying to play on any modern system like, I don't know, Windows 7 or Windows 10, you're gonna have some issues if you have multiple monitors connected to your computer. On Windows 10, you'll need to hit down Windows and P button and force to use only the PC screen. And then the game will just boot up fine from a Steam copy or probably anything else you find on the net or in your CD drawers if you can still read CD. And once that's done, we get presented with a beautiful 3D introduction straight from the early 2000s. Every detail is there from the funky voice that doesn't really fit into with each other. It's right over there! To the crazy ass, weird ass characters that I've never seen elsewhere, but the early 2000s feels like uh, the start of an adult swim or a little comedy show. Once the intro is finished, you're present with a beautiful rendering of an office. With the cigar ready, then we can go and play the game finally. Then you can launch a new game and you'll be offered to either pick up a pre-made scenario with specific objectives to try for, or you could go for a randomly generated map with the choices of multiple endings. If you go down the carrier path of pre-existing maps, you will have to live up with various preselected characteristics of your ruler. But if you opt for random maps, you will have to answer a few questions to set a backstory for your president and give him a few personality traits. These will have an impact on various settings inside the game, like faction likes and dislikes, how you align with the world stage of USA and Russia, because these will have a massive impact on how you can actually play the game depending on the income you receive, anybody will attempt to coup against you, it's most likely people that tend to dislike you, but there are other characteristics like Latulence, which just make you have to pay your guards way more than usual for being guards of your palace. Sounds like a stupid thing, but uh, if you have a limited number of trained people on the island, and that can create some kind of wealth inequality. But before answering these little questions, you can actually select the character. Of course, you have well-known characters of the Caribbean and general South America, 50s, Cold War stuff. You can go from Fidel Castro to Gusto Pinochet. And you also have uh, like less, um, how to say, factual characters like Pepe Gomez or Lou Bega. What? Lou Bega? Alright, I gotta pick him up. And you'll be allowed to set up a specific objective to complete in your generated map, so you actually have objectives to accomplish. They're less varied than the actual scenarios, which give you crazy wacky stuff to do. But every game will have a specific time limit uh, that you'll need to set up, so you cannot actually live for a million thousand years as a El Presidente of a small Caribbean society. But enough with the setting, let's go into the meat of the game. So once you get onto your island, you will be given a, a little bit of stuff to start with. So a little bit of cash, a little bit of palace, a little bit of Monica. Oh, no, no, not yet. That's not the right Lubega. No, we gotta be a very nice person. Well, we also start with the Teamster office where just fat guys carrying your shit around the island very slowly. And you also have a construction office which is just like... Uh, any other society in the world, whether capitalist or socialist, seems to be people just uh, drinking around and doing nothing all day, it's just taking years to build a single apartment complex. Then with uh, the nicely founded amount of money we have in our palace, we'll be able to actually set up infrastructure on the island, because the goal is of course not just smoking cigars and drinking rum all day, it's to accomplish whatever objective we set ourselves without getting murdered. I think that's the important point. It, they say out of the office, but let's be honest, uh, there's only one way dictator go out of this world in this 
terrible world. There's just one exception, but I guess he, he gave enough free helicopter rides that people uh, nicely asked him to stay locked down in the house until his death. Alright, let's talk about the buildings. So the first most important building will be housing for your citizens. Uh, you don't want them to live in little shacks of corrugated metals stacked together into a nicely squared shape that will just drive down the land value for your potential tourists to come into the island. So you'll want to build them nice little tenement and apartment complex that they can actually in a bit for a very small portion of money they're making from you. Housing offered to the people that make more money. Anybody who has a better job than being a farmer or a, a fat man carrying shit around will be able to afford very nice locations that they can actually in a bit for a small fee and more privacy than living in a, a cardboard tenement. Following that, after a few decades of uh, successful management of your little city, you'll be able to afford electricity and you can build now much more luxurious and complex housing system for, you know, the top notch of your society. And now housing is taken care of so your people don't have to live down in shack and they'll probably not try to murder you outright uh, after 30 years of living in little corrugated metal shacks. Now let's go down into the second section. So primary industry will be like your logging camps, your mines, your farms, and these will be the backbone of your entire economy. So if you're lucky enough and blessed by the stars to have a gold mine on your island, then you're set for life. Just build a coal mine and dig down a hole until there's nothing left of your island and just ship everything out. You'll be rich, rich, rich and you'll be able to put everything in your Swiss bank account and just, you know, bail out of the island when shit goes down so you can live a nice little beautiful life in Miami with driving a Lamborghini. But if you're not blessed enough to have a gold mine, you can still mine out iron and uh, bauxite and other stuff around. They don't want pay as well but you know it's still a, a business like any order and your people are very very pleased to do whatever job you offer them then we have the farmings where you can actually put plantations of corn or papapai or pineapples uh, also known as ananas uh, these will be mostly to feed your people because uh, believe it or not, in the 50s, uh, UNICEF didn't exist or some shit because you have to feed everyone. There's no foreign aid for feed. There's foreign aid for, for money, but there's no foreign aid for feeding your people. So you gotta make sure you have enough farm for every single person. You can also build some fishing wharves, but uh, it just doesn't feel the same. You know, it's not a real agri 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 agrarian society if you don't have uh, everybody working the fields. But, you know, just working food is not really a cash crop. We have a couple of cash crops like tobacco and sugar, which uh, you can just make a lot of money. Mm, gotta love that sweet, sweet cash crop. But don't don't get in uh, the, the, the binding of just making cash crop for the money because... Uh, you know, it's not it's not the best deal if you want to stay alive in the world of Tropico El Presidente. Different type of farms have different suitability for the fertility of the land you plant them down. So while corn pretty much grows everywhere you can set it up, the real exquisite plantations like tobacco and uh, sugar, then you need to find suitable ground which usually will be occupied by uh, some tenement or apartment complex because you didn't bother checking before building your farms. These fertile lands are in short supply on the island so you gotta make the best use out of them. And finally, the last primary resource we can use to extract all the wealth we can from the island for a short life will be logging camp, which will just be a couple of uh, tough guys drinking and cutting down trees all over the island. Generally speaking, they'll just clear cuts everything and that's the only way to make money in the real world, so that's why entire fucking forests are cut down all over the world as we speaking right now. Isn't that so worrying? Isn't that scary? Because I don't even think about it when I don't talk about it, you know what I mean? Now while you can sell these primary resources at a fair rate to the world, you can squeeze out much more value by transforming them into something more useful. The tobacco can be rolled in cigars, sugar distilled into rum, log sow into lumber, and gold craft into jewelry. These more intricate designs will require more skilled workers who have completed the high school education, so there is a somewhat drawback on relying on trained high school workers for a small nation 
that uh, you're running as the tropical president. Next up in the building we have the humanities building as it's called in the game and these are basically like um, essential services for your citizens. You have the high schools which allow you to train your citizens into high school education so they can perform more complex job on their own without needing to always import foreign workers. Of course you will probably need to import foreign workers to start the training process it should only be a short setback as if you have to rely on to these, it will become quickly expensive the more you expand your island. Uh, continuing into the education, you also have the college needs electricity to operate as well as college trained workers. And this is a more of a drawback than any other. You do have one specific personality trait that uh, um, this allow you to be actually able to build college and train your own people. So if you do have this disability in your island as your president, you'll be stuck importing very expensive college trained people to complete the more complex work. These college educations will be important as they will cover a lot of the more high end works that can be done onto the island. In the same humanity field with the schools you also have the church and the cathedral which need trained workers and will allow your citizen to express their religious needs and will be important to provide religious service to your citizens to keep them happy. You also have the clinic and hospital who also require trained workers which will be important to keep them happy and healthy on the long run. The next category will be infrastructure which will allow you to build roads as well as Teamster office to carry shit around and construction office to build things up. The two other important building in the category will be the port that will allow you to send out extracted resources from your island to make a profit and will also allow people please, to come please, immigrate please. to your island you and it will also welcome that. tourists on yacht so that they can come and spend their big dollar on your island. Now I'm really starting like uh, I'm dragging out on the building categories, but it, it is a city builder after all, so we do have to go through uh, thoroughly throughout the entire building sequences. But now we are approaching quickly the last few sections. Uh, before going into the touristy stuff, we have to talk about uh, the design. So you can actually go into the last, the Palm 3, that will allow you to place down uh, props for the settings, which are. Oh, I believe only aesthetics. Uh, you don't actually get any bonus from planting down plants and trees and stuff. Except maybe uh, of a very pragmatic level that maybe planting down trees will allow you to chop them down. But I haven't really pushed the experience to be sure. Uh, so finally we'll be uh, taking on to uh, the pre-last category before Taurus. I'm sorry it's dragging on now. This will be more the management of the population will sections. You can build a newspaper building that will allow you to uh, create newspaper for your population to indoctrinate them in the right thinking. You can also do the same with uh, the radio station and TV station that will allow you to uh, expand your ideas onto your population while they will willfully just sit down and take in all the bullshit you're telling them. We also have the, the most important uh, gestion of the people so you can build down pubs and restaurants to allow them to uh, consume and be happy but you also need to build police office and uh, armory to store guns as well as a watchtower in trouble areas of slums which uh, will be important if you plan on living a long and prosperous life as El Presidente uh, that's acting maybe a bit too authoritarian that doesn't really allow their people to do what they want. But these are pretty straightforward and once you have the basis down you can actually uh, pretty much cheese up what you need to do. Uh, once you have a good understanding of the working system, the worker system, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now let's go into the touristy stuff. And for me, amigo, la piñata is bravo. And you remember me, huh? With a lot of rum. We have to associate with drinks. So you have two categories for the tourists. You have the 
uh, tourist attractions which are different buildings like uh, beachside villas, observation posts to allow tourists to go into these specific spots, spend their good earned money in exchange of an entertainment service. The tourists will also go with the citizens and the pub and restaurants, but uh, they, they tend to really relegate mostly of their time into spending it into tourist attractions. So if you're making sure that you balance the tourist attraction in the right section, you can actually pull off a a nice profit from building out this attraction but of course the tourists won't come before you build hotels for them so you have a couple of level of hotels you can build down really cheap motel that are roadside in the US that will allow you to get in very very cheap tourists in but these are very inexpensive to build and will allow you to bring in more new money into the island with very little effort as the people, the tourists that go to these cheap hotels seem to have very little criteria into what they're looking for. But you can step up and build more expensive hotel. You can build very high luxury hotel, which will require more amenities like electricity to be on your island. But doing so will allow you to have tourists that have a lot of money to spend onto your island. And if you build an airport, you can really cycle through all these tourists very quickly. So while you could definitely make money only extracting resources from your island and transforming them into goods, the tourists will most likely in most games be your principal source of wealth. And this pretty much wraps it up for all the buildings. So let's talk a bit more about the building system. So while you can build roads to connect your building, you don't have to as the people in Tropical 1 do not drive anywhere. They walk from their home to their job to wherever they want to go spend their money without ever needing a real method of transportation. This does have a drawback because people who live very far from their workplace take most of the day walking to that workplace without actually doing any value out of their work because they spend the entire day walking. So in some instance, if you have, for example, a dock that is set very far away, like in a certain scenario, and your people are living at the other end of the island, it can become a problem for your island because the dock workers are not there. You will just get a backup of ships, so you're not able to sell goods and you're not able to receive tourists at a... Uh, tolerable rate because your workers are just walking around uh, all the time. We'll talk a bit more about the worker in depth later, but now let's talk about placement of the buildings. In Tropico, you can place the building pretty much anywhere where it will show up green. Uh, there are some buildings that you can actually rotate around that will allow you to set them in a specific orientation, but generally speaking, it doesn't really matter much, and a lot of buildings that should be able to be rotated are not like the construction office and the high school cannot be rotated at all which I find that pre pretty problematic throughout my playthrough because sometimes it feel like uh, it, they should be able to be fitting in a specific spot but it just doesn't work that well but once you find a spot where the overlay is green you can finally put down the building and construction will start now construction is a little bit weird in Tropical 1 because your construction office needs to be filled with workers and these workers will take their sweet time to go to the site of construction and they will start leveling the terrain and removing any trees or anything that's uh, like shacks in the way. Uh, so this will add a delay to the construction itself as you need to have a clearer land. Once the construction site is flat and level and clear of any debris they'll just start hammering hammering for a very long time as you see the overlay starts filling more and more when the overlay becomes fully colored it becomes the building itself so i find that principle very interesting that you actually need the workers to go onto the site and do the work uh, i find it also cause other issues like for example if you have multiple buildings that you want to build at the same time you have to either assign a priority to those you want build first most of the time your workers seem to be doing pretty much whatever they want and never really focusing on specific building orders that you're setting down one of the most glaring example of that is in one of the missions the earliest scenarios i believe you have to build a airport to be allowed to go back home trying to put down the airport on your small crooked 
tree-filled island just takes at least 20 years to do and you pretty much only have 30 years of belief to do the mission so you need to rush to the point where you're able to build the airport and then once you start building the airport you have to put high priority build multiple construction office you have as much worker as possible consecrate all their time into doing that specific construction as quickly as possible as it is your only objective throughout the scenarios and not completing it in time will cause you to fail so all right now let's talk a little bit about the worker system because in tropical one i find it pretty damn interesting the way it is set up unlike older city building games you have almost no control over the workers really the only thing you can control is you can block off positions so that no one can take them and you can fire workers from their current workplace and you can decide the salary or the wage that the worker is getting in that specific position but you're not allowed to force people into specific works uh, the people will decide on their own what type of work they're taking so sometimes you have weird things especially if you have larger island where workers will be very far as mentioned prior and they will take all day to just walk to their work site and not do any actual work also certain type of work like high school teacher or cabaret dancer are reserved to a specific category in this case will be female with specific level of education while doctors will need to be uh, male college educates so you have to balance the amount of workers you have on your island with different qualifications as well as their sex to be sure that you're able to backfill every open position on your island which is more of the challenge that you'll be facing most of the time so just making sure that you have the appropriate amount of workers and you're setting the appropriate amount of wage for what you want them to do will be your primary objective and so once all the conditions are set you just need to wait for the people to actually backfill these open position hope that these workers will live close enough and they will be able to go to their work site and start working as soon as possible throughout the day to remedy that situation you can of course build roads between their work site and their habitation site but the word system is not excellent in tropical one and feels more like a, a very long waiting game of just laying down the track and waiting for construction crew to actually go and do something about it it's not really something you can rely most of the time early on when you don't have much building going on you can facilitate the traveling of your workers throughout the island by building roads but the later you get into the game and the, the more distance between housing and different work sites there are the harder it becomes to be able to manage this so you have to more rely on the workers to to have the right luck of getting an open position near their home just building the appropriate homes nearby will be a great help for example if you have college educated males uh, required at a certain position maybe building luxury apartments nearby will be better than building tenements you can build tenements near the farms and mines because they will be able to backfill the position are nearby so there's a little bit of management at that level but it's nothing really complex to actually go in depth and think about layouts you just have to be conscious of the reality of the tropican people to be ensured that these people will be doing the appropriate work at the appropriate time and position now managing all of that is one thing of the game but you also have to deal with factions and the longer your city slash country will go the more you'll have to actually take care and manage the factions so you have different type of factions like communist, capitalist, militarist, religious and environmentalist and every one of them will have different criteria so depending on the action you're taking they will be more favorable to you or not and also you have the addition of the personality trait of your leaders that you choose early before starting the, the, the actual country that will have an impact on these different uh, groups. Now these different groups will have demands and will want to force in things to you. Really the, the most important role they will have is that eventually if you frustrate them enough, for example, if you build your island really just relying on lugging wood to make money, then it's possible that the inverter malice become very, very angry with you and may want to overthrow your government and get you out of power of the island because you go against them. So you have to keep a close eye on these different groups and manage them. 
Uh, the interface is really nice because you do have a wide range viewing and knowledge of every faction on your island and you can understand how happy or mad they are at, against you. With that interface you'll be really able to pin down problematic characters and then you'll be able to take some gone. actions to uh, troubleshoot the problems as I like to say. But otherwise there you have a couple of more uh, overlay maps that you can put on for example to see the minerals on your island or the, the wood dentist city or what is the best area for specific crops these menus will be very helpful give you a general idea on how to set up your island so now let's go and talk about the edict uh, so edicts are actions you can undertake as the ruler of your tropical country uh, these range from uh, facilitating birth on your country to uh, allow more people to deliver children to uh, feeding the poor people so they get less pissed off at the actions you take to uh, dealing, for example, close ties with the Russians or the Americans for a little bit more money on the side from foreign aid to downright just murdering people for disagreeing with your rulership uh, for example, if you go down into an election year and you fear you might be losing, you could just pull the trigger and get someone assassinated. Don't go in thinking it's a fail-safe method of dealing with problems, but it, it's definitely an efficient method of dealing with problematic characters on your island. You do have a nice range of edict outside of that, but it isn't really the main focus of the game. It's more like a, a, an extra kickback. Uh, to help you achieve different objectives or uh, different personal goals you're setting yourself but it's definitely not the main attraction of the game it really is just about building your own country and setting down buildings that's the main attraction of the game now if i have to be honest one of the uh, biggest letdown i have about tropical becomes quite repetitive the more you play it i understand it's uh, now what 20 years old title something like that what year is it even just always going through the same developments you have to achieve the same milestones every time for example if you want a more complex building you always have to start making money by extracting natural resources then you go and build an electrical factory and you have to backfill all the open position with your staff that you have to foreign train people i understand that's the main attraction of playing as city builders but I, I sometimes feel while playing Tropico, while it's very enjoyable, it, it just becomes a grind. I also have a problem with the time span because I, I do personally spend most of my time playing it very fast because I feel like the people are just not very quickly moving and acting around. But going it very fast does make time fly by very, very fast. The game is it gets to 70s, 80s, 90s without like even noticing anything going on when you play it very fast and honestly get used to the speed that you're setting very quickly which becomes frustrating because the setup that you've done early in the game allows you to, to have a prosperous nation quickly become obsolete. So you have to go back and revise every salary of every worker or every workshop uh, there, there are some like quality of life that you have in the game for example you can set the wages for all unskilled or high school or college worker at once to a set rate but if you really need doctors on your island and you have a short supply of college educated person then you probably want to favor and put more money offering onto the doctor so if you go in and just want to raise everybody two dollars there's no quick way to do that wage change so you have to set the baseline and then go into each specific building to specify exactly for that building how much you want to spend when you get to very large islands with a lot of different uh, little clinics and uh, different types of work to be done on the island uh, it becomes a a shore to actually make sure that the wage equality is well respect uh, that those that are more important to your island are paid more than those that are let's say slightly less important to the island well working but in the end the game is not bad at all it's actually a pretty damn solid city builder even with those specific restrictions you have and it's still very well playable as an example I did myself just start 
playing uh, this year, the first one, never played it before. Uh, if you can work around the maybe slightly more dated graphics uh, that still look pretty good to my opinion, but some people I can understand don't want to actually see old, old school drowned graphics on your screen. But uh, it's generally speaking a pretty nice looking game. And you have the music also that is mwah, excellent, mamma uh, Of course, I can't really put that much of it in here because it's all copyrighted material. But I can I can do something for you, and I'm sure you'll be able to agree with me that it is the best I can do. I will hereby sing the most important song that's not even in this game. Guantanamera. Guaira, Guantanamera, Guantanamera, Guaira, Guantanamera, Guantanamera, Guaira, Guantanamera, Guantanamera, Guaira, Guantanamera. Diverso es de un verde claro y de un carmín encendido. Diverso es de un verde claro y de un carmín encendido. Diverso en un cielo herido que busca en el monte amparo. Cuánta mera. Guaira, Guantanamera Guantanamera Guaira, Guantanamera Okay, I think that will be enough for you guys. Pretty sure uh, you've been able to enjoy my singing talents here for a little while. It's not first time, it's not last time. So don't worry if you want to hear more. Uh, just stay tuned for more. But let's go back to the main core of the review that we're talking about today. Of course, I mean Tropical 1. So now we've dealt with pretty much every aspect of the game. Really, there isn't much more to the game. You build your country slash town slash highland and you get on going with your life. And generally speaking, the game is very simple, very straightforward, very easy to certain extent depending on the settings you set up at the start but it, th there's no real challenge right there's no fear of foreign invasion at least not that I know of maybe there is just I haven't went through that the game while very old still sapped a lot of time from me like an incredible enormous amount of time that I've invested in this game it's just crazy. The game, I think, is well worth your try. If you have never played any Tropico, it might be even more worthwhile to actually go and try it out. Because I feel like if you played later uh, inspiration of the games, from what I've seen and read, uh, it seems like a lot of qualities of lives are missing in the game. So it might have an impact on the way you perceive the game and the enjoyment you can pull out of this title. But otherwise, really, if you go in and you try, I'm pretty damn sure you will find a little bit of fun doing whatever you want in your island. After all, sir, you are El Presidente. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more. If you didn't, make sure to drop a dislike, I don't know what to tell you, man. Why, why did you stick around so long? Thanks for watching, and see you around.